All right, and we're back at 145 pounds. And, you know, in a, in a contrast to the last weight class or two, here we go back to weight class where you have one guy in, in a class of his own. Um, you know, 41 and 0, Colin Guy from Quakertown. And, you know, he has wrestled everybody this year. Uh, he's, you know, he wrestled uh, up at 160 District Duels, wrestled Beck Ruiz Sadradinov. He won uh, Escape the Rock. I mean, anyone that, that stepped on the mat with him, he's gone out and beat. Uh, what we'll discuss, though, is who the other four medalists will be that, that will represent us at States. Yeah, I just want to talk about Guy here. I mean, he, you know, you talk about wrestling everybody, and, you know, this is a, a credit to that Quakertown coaching staff. I mean, they make sure he, he's getting every match he can get because this, this kid's on a mission to win a state title now, you know, as a sophomore. I mean, you don't get too many opportunities to win a state title, Joe, and this kid has a chance right now. Um, so – they did a great job all season long. When's the last time we saw a kid come in at 41 and 0 um, to a regional, uh, you know, situation? So this this is this is a legit, you know, district one potential state champion. And you know, I, I like your bracket with Parnas. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the Parnas uh, car rematch here. Uh, I just think Parnas is a little bit more mature. Uh, he's kind of got the man strength now as a senior. And uh, I really think this is going to be the final, uh, the way you have it. Um, yeah, I think Parnas, Parnas puts it on car again. Um, you know, you know, 14, seven was the result last time, um, you know, and not, not really even close. Uh, I think, you know, Parnas uh, maintains that distance in route to being a, a runner up. Um, other than that, like, you know, you look there, you look past that. We got some guys that just, uh, you know, this a lot of, a lot of parody beyond, beyond, uh, beyond guy and Parnas. I think, you know, you have Parnas at one level, I'm sorry, guy at one level, Parnas below him. Uh, I know Parnas has gained some fans on the forum the last several days. Um, but you know, all the fandom in the world is not going to help him beat Kong guy. Kong's going to be too much for him. Uh, yeah, every capacity. I and I have, uh, you know, I have Biashkovov uh, beating Brian here, but th that match could go either way. Um, you know, this kid, we were talking off camera, Nate and I on camera, but off camera. And th this kid has wrestled a lot of really good kids last year and was on the other end of it. And this year, here he is coming in at 30, 30 and four as a sophomore. Um, so, you know, again, I, I don't know if he's going to be a bracket buster uh, of any sort, but I do have him getting to the semifinals and, and getting out when we go down below. But um, you're right. This, this is a one man show. Uh, and and Parnas, you know, Parnas has something to prove. I mean, he he's you know, he, he's going to he's got to go up there and medal this year. I mean, he, he got there. Um, it's time for him to medal. So, you know, this, listen, following Colin Guy all the way to States isn't a bad gig. I remember uh, Craig Rollins, I coached at Abington, uh, followed Scott Stay two years in a row to States. Uh, it's not a bad way to go at, at regionals. Um, so, you know, Parnas is going to be primed here to get through, obviously, uh, and, and get a state medal. So I really think th this is a good spot for both these kids. Um, and these are guys probably that all kind of know each other from the circuit, uh, and I kind of like that too. I, th this is a nice group. Yeah, I think the biggest thing just yeah, I do think Parnas is the favorite to get get to the final from the bottom side. It'll be interesting to see what kind of what Carr you know make, worked on this week just to kind of try to close the gap a little bit. See if he can do that. Obviously, his first time in a the PIAA postseason, so a little different than Delaware. Obviously, he had success down there. You know, having success this year, but uh, you know, I think Parnas is just a little bit more seasoned at this point, and Carr is certainly poised for a, a really good future, but um, you know, it's going to be a tough task in the semis again. Slide uh, us down. Slide yeah. us down, Joe. <laughs> Ooh. Look at that. Ooh, interesting. Um, I'll, uh, you guys, take a gander and, and give me what you think. Let them know, you know, I'll get, you know, defer to both of you on this one. Well, I'll go first because I think, you know, Nate has a little more knowledge of some of the other guys. So uh, the way I have it coming down, I mean, I'm just going to go right to the the Conti semis. I, I, I don't want to go back in. 
Um, but I do have David Heiser getting. So my bracket is a little bit different up top because I have uh, Biosca Bob uh, getting through. Um, so I don't have him in that same spot. But I do have Pepe and Carr uh, wrestling here for third. And I have Carr winning that one and Pepe getting out in the fourth spot. And then I have uh, Biosca Bob uh, taking out David Heiser uh, to, to go. So and that's a rematch. They wrestled earlier in the year in a dual meet. I believe it was like 10, two or 10, four, uh, by Ishkabov, uh, won that match. And like, you know, I uh, don't know that if, if they, you know, both of us have him wrestling him in some capacity. I don't know that he closes that gap. Um, but you know, David Hodges is wrestling well coming off of district one North, uh, championship. He's been a little up and down this year. Um, but you know, you, you never know. Uh, I, I do like, uh, Brian, uh, you know, I think he, you know, he said he gets, uh, he gets out represent Chichester, one of two regional qualifiers from that, uh, that team. Um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, he's been around for a few years and I, I think he puts it together and he, he, he punches his tickets to States in that, uh, Conti semi. Yeah, I agree. I have Brian getting out. I have him getting out in the, in the, uh, the fifth place match. I have Carr and uh, Bayesh Kabov in the uh, in the third place match. I have Carr winning that one, uh, but yeah, I think there's so many kids around the same level in this bracket. It's going to be uh, you know a lot of dog fights down here, you know. But um, you know, go either way. We've been saying that a lot, which I, I guess is either a sign of a lot of parity in District One or maybe just an exciting time coming up. Uh, I think Pepe certainly has a shot, and if he could somehow squeak through for Kenneth, that would you know certainly help their them in the team standings. He's been close. I'm not sure if he, he has enough to, to get, get over that hump, but you know, certainly set himself up with for, for next year, if not. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, I, I think we, we're well represented here at this weight class after Ga. Um, someone's gonna be left home. You know, and that's that's again we're gonna see that like we said earlier in a, in a you know, in three or four weight classes where some good kids are gonna be left home. Well, this is a good problem for the southeast region and district one this year. We're gonna have I don't think we're going to take the beating that we've taken in that first round at States like we have the last at least two years. I don't know if I – maybe three years, Mike Mike would – you know, we were sitting up there the one year, and it was just like, what are we doing here in this first round? So this is a year uh, where I don't expect us to to be kind of frowning and, and kind of going like this and like what happened in the first round. I think the first round is going to be pretty good uh, for, for District 1. And but but some kids are going to be left home, and and this is a weight class where I think one guy gets left out that probably should be there. Agreed. So let's uh, let's turn the pages. Go to one fifty two. Uh, one fifty two brings on some uh, some oh, more excitement. Boy. Yeah, this is this is going to be completely different. Um, this is where I go off the off the charts. Why wow, there's I not a half row guy in this weight class? I'm off the reservation right here, guys. There's no Happer or guy in this weight class. I know. Well, no, it's not that bad, I guess. I'm, all, I'm only one match different, maybe. So um, uh, I'll, I'll jump in here at 152. Um, you know, you got Sam Gotro, your one seed. I think him and Keikos are on a collision course for a rematch in the, um, uh, in the finals, uh, rematch of the District 1 North final. Uh, you know, Gotro's just been uh, really spectacular this year. Um, you know, he took advantage of the, the, the tremendous schedule. They got to wrestle at Owen J, uh, you know, King of the Mountain, Grizzly Duels, um, Trojan Wars, Escape the Rock, just the pack grinds, and has uh, has definitely uh, been better for it. Uh, I think he uh, wins his first match. He gets a rematch with Shoemaker. Um, and then you got in that second, in that bottom half of that top bracket, that quarterfinals, um, Gavin Cole and Gamble Williams, is a, that's a, a rematch that a lot of people allegedly want to see based upon the result of the first one. Uh, Glenn, you might want us to talk more about that when you have the, when you have the <laughs> mic. Uh, you know, second round of Ke Keikos and, and Trent Allen, which is a rematch from the semifinals last week at the District 1 North Tournament. Although Trent Allen is super talented, um, you know, Keiko is just a little bit better uh, right now. Um, and he proved it last week. And then a hansbury Borzio match in the quarterfinals is going to be you know, a lot of fun as well. Um, but I, I think when the dust settles, you're going to have Keikos and Borzio, Cole and Gotro, and uh, Gotro and Keikos making it through, and Gotro beating Keikos again, uh, as he did in the in the District uh, 1 North Final. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to jump in here because, you know, 
the the thing I I can't see your lower half bracket, so I have this. I'm I'm right down the line here uh, in terms of the semifinals uh, with Gutro and Cole. It's uh, you know Gutro obviously uh, is the guy to beat here in this weight class right now. He's had a great season, like you said, Joe. But Kelly Kakos has something to prove. He he missed you know most of the season. He missed the whole season for the most part. Only kind of showed showed up at the post. Uh, with the starting with the duels and then now in the individual postseason, I got Kakos winning this. I have K- I have Kakos, you know, digging deep. Uh, he put in so much time uh, in the off season. I got to see him down here at Apache. Um, I I just feel like uh, he's going to have some magic here uh, at this regional final. So I have Kakos and 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 Gutro there, but I have Kakos winning it. I have Borzio. Uh, and Cole in the same spot. So, uh, and, and listen, Han- Hansbury, uh, you know, you mentioned Hansbury. Hansbury is a tough out. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if he can, you know, g- you know take Borgio out, but Hansbury is going to be dangerous down in the wrestle back. So I'm interested to see uh, what we all have down below because, uh, Nate, do you have anything different up top with your winner? Because I have Kekos. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it's just a tough, uh, tough year for Kekos, you know, Regional runner-up the last two years, you know, finally getting to his senior year, and he, he, he takes on the injury early on and fights his way back. It seems like he hasn't necessarily got 100% physically. Um, you know, I don't know if he I don't know if he increases that percentage each week or if it's just kind of a, a steady maintaining of, of where he's at. I think, obviously, he's got the talent to beat Gotro. Um, I just don't know that he's got the body right now for it. And I feel feel for the kid, but he he's certainly poised to be the the first uh, three time state qualifier for for, for Perk Valley. So, you know, make your get, get to Hershey, and then you know that's the, that's the big thing. Uh, you know, we've talked about bracket busters. Um, you know, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I'm ready to predict one here, but you know, Chesmont wise, you got two of the two of the most fun, wild wrestler with your hair on fire kind of wrestlers, Garrett Landon and and Tyler Mayers. Uh, oftentimes it gets them to their own back, but sometimes they get the kids to, the, to to their back. So keep an eye on Landon and, and Myers. Those guys can throw. They can roll. They don't mind rolling on their own back for a few seconds if it takes. Uh, if that's what it takes. They've been in some wild matches. Obviously, some tough first round matches with Trent and Allen against Myers and and Landon going against Cole. But uh, you know, if you're looking for potential bracket busters, uh, I think those are a couple of guys to keep an eye on just with their style. We look down here at the bottom half of the bracket. Uh, you know, Landon. Um, you know, we have to be fair to uh, Glenn's buddy Gio Iadenisi. Uh, he's <laughs> you got to put him in that same conversation of a guy who'd just rather throw you than know you. Uh, and he, uh, you know, he's he's poised that he could he could again not bust the bracket, but you know, definitely ruin someone's um, uh, you know weekends. Yeah, that'll be a fun, be a fun <laughs> wrestle back right there. I had an EC yeah. Myers. Yeah, and let me tell you, Gio's not looking at the bracket, just so you know. He's not, <laughs> not at all. At the bracket. No. Nope. I, I just got to say this right now, Joe. I cannot believe we have the same bracket, consolation bracket. I This is like a first. Because this is one of those weight classes, like a lot of crazy things can go on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's, it, it, you're right. Like, I was uh, when I did fifty two. I was like, man, I was like, we're probably gonna be so off on this one. But it, no, so no, you and I are. I mean, listen, I I don't have Allen. I have Hansbury there just because I'm a homer. But um, I I have you know Gamble Williams, you know, getting out there because I have him against Hansbury. But uh, like Nate said, Allen's very dangerous. Um, so this this listen again one fifty two back to Caicos. I mean, did he? It might be a bigger jump than he thought initially. Um, because, you know, he, he did have a rough go at the district duels. So, you know, the weight class itself, you have some really experienced kids that are solid, that, that have been around at the upper, upper weight class. And Keiko's, you know, I had him kind of more of as a, you know, upper middle, not upper middleweight, more of as an upper lightweight. Um, you know, when I, when I, when I saw him at 152, I mean, I knew it was coming, um, but this is, this is what he's going to run into. Like Nate said, there's some dangerous dudes out there. Yeah. I think, uh, just down low, I, I have Gamble Williams getting out, uh, that, you know, I, I have him beating Cole in the quarters and making semis and dropping down. 
Obviously a tough rematch with Allen there. Uh, something about Gamble Williams, you know, last year he just kind of just kind of survived and made states and came up with a big big last second uh, move against Kokosberger last year in the fifth six match to win. Something about that kid that just kind of hangs in there and wins some of these close matches. Uh, obviously solid at district duels. Um, you know, you can talk about Sun Valley's lack of of schedule, but it seems like he always gets the toughest kid from the other team. So he's certainly uh, battle tested. Um, I'm not sure he's he's good enough to beat Borzio. Borzio is obviously, you know, very motivated after last year. You know, coming up just short. Uh, so I think he's the third place finisher. Then I have Gamble Williams and I have Cole sneaking out at fifth place with Allen being the odd man out. But hey, Allen, it certainly wouldn't surprise me if he's in that consolation final either. So yeah, he's got wins over Gamble Williams and Hansberry this year. Yep. So. Yeah, the Potsgrove just kind of gets forgotten a lot of times. So, I mean, he's certainly uh, a name to not not take lightly. Nope. All right, well, <clears throat> let's move on to 160. Um, Glenn will kind of hop back on. Uh, Nate, take a look at the bracket. And, um, you know, you, you, you kick us off on this one here. Uh, you know, where, where do you see it going differently than I do? <laughs> yeah, I think I have it uh, pretty similar. I, I think I, I have to do have Barlow getting uh, you know, avenging a loss to Pasco from District Duels, and, and Barlow has been wrestling well. Uh, he's got a tough first round match, though. You know, just for starters, you know, obviously get, getting Gallagher right off the bat is not an easy task. Not an easy. It's not really a reward for winning your section. Uh, but if he gets by that one, I think he makes makes the semifinals, and he's going to have a tough one with, against Pasco. I think it was four three, so it was kind of a. Uh, a coin flip match. Certainly, either guy could win. I'm going to go with Barlow. Um, Sedradinov, obviously the favorite. Uh, just you know, a little bookkeeping. Um, Council Rock South is one one regional champ away from tying North Penn for the most in District One. So, uh, a good chance to tie that here. And I'm not sure if they'll they'll pass it in the same tournament or not. But uh, you know, Topher Tryon, David Rainey. That's a really good quarterfinal. Uh, I think. Tryon wins that one, but Rainey certainly, uh, you know, kind of a forgotten guy down there in Ridley. He's got a, he certainly has a, a resume that could get him to the semifinals and obviously, uh, you know, pays off to get to semifinals in this bracket. But I think, I, I think all your picks look pretty good. You know, Pasco Barlow coin flip match. And, uh, you know, I think they're wrestling for second down there. All right. Well, I'm going to come in with a different spin. So this is a bang and weight class. I mean, we're going to see some throws. We're going to see some big time cradles some Beck. Um, and, you know, I'm really high on Pasco. Uh, got to see him this year, you know, live and in person during the season. Uh, but uh, this Ryan Gallagher right now, I mean, he, he, he wrestled Beck really tough uh, up at the District 1 East section. Um, I think he's your bracket buster. So I have Gallagher getting to the finals in a rematch uh, against Sadra Dinoff. I have Beck winning. Um, I do have uh, Triune uh, and Pasco there in the same spot in the semis. Um, and I know Barlow's, uh, you know, been wrestling great. Um, I got to see him in live, too, at the, at the Cold Cracker. But uh, I just think Ryan Gallagher, um, you know, he didn't get to wrestle the whole season either. I mean, he basically has wrestled the postseason at 16-5. and five, And uh, his, his matches, every match has been a grinder. So that's the only real difference. I mean, and that really changes things. Uh, for me down below, but it probably doesn't change the top five. So I think that when we look at some of when we look at a weight class like this at 160 with a bunch of bangers, um, I, I think if we have the right five, I think we did a good job. Glenn, uh, this is my surprise face at, at, uh, at Gallagher. Yeah, but you know what? I'm, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's, out of, okay. it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but surprised. Uh, you, that's, uh, you know, um, I would like to tell you at the end of the weekend. Um, I'd like you to tell me I told you so at the end of the weekend. I well, do you, like Gallagher. You can, you can tell me. You can tell me probably on Friday night around seven thirty. <laughs> yep. And then he's the kind of kid. He likes a good. He likes a good three-one match, whether it's against uh, you know a really good kid or maybe not a, as good of a kid. He kind of keeps things close no matter what. So hey, certainly not without no yeah, not listen, out of the realm of possibility. I, you gotta have a bracket buster out there because <clears throat> Joe, you and I. We, a couple times we've had like a lockdown weight class, and it only takes one. It yeah, it takes, takes one. one. <clears throat> I mean, we can go back. You know, you go back through the years of 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 matches that that just blown weight classes up, and it happens all the time. So we look at the bottom half here. 
and I'll jump in, um, you know, with our, you know, I, I, having Pasco and, and Sandra Dean off in the final. I think Barlow comes back, takes third. Um, and then I, I'm sorry, I do have a mistake, and I've double checked this. I think McGurn beats, or Barlow beats McGurn for third, and then Gallagher beats Tryon. Uh, I apologize for that mistake. Shouldn't be. Um, there we are. Now it's now it's legit. Uh, for fifth place, and Gallagher goes, just not as a second place guy. I got him going as a fifth place guy. And, um, so. Yeah, I mean, pretty easy for me. I have the same five. So I have Barlow down there in the fifth spot, and Pasco and McGurin going at it for the third place uh, with Pasco winning. So I, we have the, t- the same five. I just have Gallagher as a bracket buster. Maybe I'm just trying to create a little drama, but I'm a big-time homer, and I think Penn Ridge is going to be the team to beat in this region. Um, so that, that's why I just I think that they're going to have one or two guys. Penn Ridge, one or two guys. Could be Geo, could be somebody else. Uh, but I just feel like Gallagher's the guy. Um, he's been he's just come up like really short in a couple of matches. State duels. I, I just felt like he 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 is very close to turning the corner to be a superstar. It's interesting that Penridge has those two 15 seeds that are you know potential potential to ruin the bracket with McBride earlier on and then yeah. Gallagher. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, if, if Barlow doesn't get past Pasco in the semis, he's got to wrestle Gallagher again in those Conti semis. That that'll be a tough rematch, depending on how things go in the first round. That you know, those two probably meet again, in, you know, in the Conti semis. So, oh, we got a dog on camera. Who's your underdog? Ryan Gallagher, right there. All right, so we'll uh, let's roll over and we'll get to 172 pounds. We start to hit the bigger guys, and. Uh, the number of weight class kind of kind of wide open. Um, however, um, I'm gonna, um, Glenn, let let you you uh, you take the lead here yeah. uh, on uh, this one. Uh, yeah, th- this is a really tough one for me. Um, you know, Talon Hogan's been wrestling great. Pasco's been wrestling great. Uh, McClellan's a beast, um, and you know, I don't know much about Romasco. I got to see him. Uh, finally last week. Um, but, you know, Mason Keller is pretty solid, too, from, from Pensbury. So, so the, this is a grinding weight class. These are all grinders. So this is one of those ones, like, if you're planning on taking a nap, do, do it at 2.15. Um, pay attention right here. Um, because at 172, there's going to be some serious, uh, you know, stuff going on out on the mat. So I, I have Mc, McClellan. Uh, getting all the way to the finals, uh, and I have Hogan, uh, you know, taking out Pasco. So that's that's a big difference. But I have Keller getting by Romasco. So it's a little bit different. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I, I flipped a coin uh, between McClellan and Pasco. Um, excuse me, uh, McClellan and Hogan, and and Hogan just I feel like Hogan's <coughs> similar to Gallagher. Hogan, Hogan's had some. He's had some tough breaks again up at uh, State Duels. Um, I just feel like he's had some tough breaks and he's learned a lot. I mean, this kid's a sophomore. Um, and I just think it's his time. I think he's going to grab a Southeastern region title. And again, this is why Penridge is going to win is because these guys are going to come through uh, a weight class, uh, a banging weight class and where they, they let it fly, you know, kind of, you know, listen, if you, you get into this spot into the semifinals. I mean, for me, someone like, you know, uh, Hogan, he gets into semifinals. He, he he's looking to advance. So why not punch your ticket right there? Um, and I think if he does that, I think he's, he's going to be on a high and get by McClellan. So um, again, it's going to change the bracket for me down low. I don't think I'm being a homer here either. Cause I think if all, all four of these guys can probably uh, win a title, I mean, I think McClellan uh, again, uh, only one loss, but I, I'm going to question the schedule. Uh, I'm not, I'm not afraid to do that. <laughs> I'm surprised it's taking you this long to mention the schedule. Of all the teams and guys we talked about, you wait, you hang your hat on on Conestoga, a team that that has probably gotten the most out of their team this year. Um, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, from start to finish, their coach getting hired late in the process. Um, you know, uh, Gary Brown, I believe, is is their coach um, and changing things and making district duels. Uh, again, <clears throat> not having. The level, the 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 same depth of talent of other teams, but um, you know, compared comparatively to some other teams, their schedule is not 
not nearly as uh, as bad. Um, and uh, you know, I, I just think McClellan, after uh, seeing him beat Pasco over the weekend, I think he he does it again. I think he makes the final. Uh, I think Pasco, uh, the Pasco brothers, uh, I think highly of them as as wrestlers. Uh, I think that you know, as much as I like Town Hogan, Town was a guy I really liked watching last year. Really liked watching him through our district duels. We got to see at Matt side. We got to call those matches. Uh, I just think Pasco's a, a a better. They're both great wrestlers. Pasco's right now the better athlete, and I think that senior um, senior sophomore um, you know matchup is is going to go the seniors' way. Yeah, and listen, you know you're you're right about the Pascos. The Pascos are like the Bechtolds. I mean, these kids, these uh, anytime you have a band of brothers, uh, that that is, and they're kind of competing against one another too to see who can go the furthest, who can do the best. Um, the, the, listen. I, I totally agree. This is like this whole thing is for me is whoever's having a better day. I mean, you, listen, you you have the flow in a southeastern region tournament. It's a two day tournament. If something unexpected happens, that let's see how you respond. Uh, not only in a match, but even in a loss, because you know coming back through the bracket down below, if it's a different bracket, like how do you respond? And I'm not worried about Pasco or Hogan responding. Um, and certainly McClellan, obviously, uh, I have him going to the finals pretty easily. So, um, Nate, what do you got? Yeah, it looks pretty familiar. Uh, I think, yeah, Pasco, Hogan, that's, that's a really tight one. Pasco just being, I think, maybe a little bit better athlete, a, a really good football player, a little bit older, maybe gives him a little bit of advantage there. McClellan, you know, I wasn't too sure he would beat Pasco last week. He did, and that kind of opened some people's eyes. You know, obviously we talked about the schedule, but, you know, that's a good win last week. If he can keep his confidence, I think he certainly, you know, could win this one. Conestoga hasn't had a, a regional champ since 2008, Jack Chittister. So, um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a long time since Conestoga's had a champ, obviously. Um, that Rom- Romasco-Keller quarterfinal, I think that's going to be an interesting one. Um, I think Keller, you know, gets sl- slept on a little bit. Uh, but that, that would be a big win for him. You know, the other, other one in the first round I'm, I'm kind of paying attention to was uh, Jack Weldon from Coatesville against Mason Richards from Spring Ford. Of course uh, you are. You know, well, I mean, honestly, I'll say why is, you know, this, the West sectional was not very good, I don't think, and not very deep. And I don't, I honestly don't know how good Jack Weldon is. So I'm interested. Obviously, Richards is a pretty good, pretty tough freshman. Weldon seems like he's a confident guy. He said last week he doesn't check the, the brackets. He just goes out and wrestles. So I, I appreciate that spirit. Um, but I think whoever wins that one has a good shot to make to the, uh, the Constellation semifinals. Whoever loses is going to have a tough road back. So that will be one to kind of keep an eye on, at least for me, just to see where, yeah. where this Weldon kid is. Cause I, no, I, I like I that. I, I have Keller in the semis too, uh, Nate. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the bottom half. So, um, you know, you're looking at, uh, I have, um, I have, you mentioned Richards. I have Richards losing uh, to Pasco and then coming down and going on a little bit of a run. Uh, like you alluded to, uh, Nate, and it's no secret, the winner of that match between Weldon and Richards really gives themselves a nice uh, path uh, all the way, in my opinion, to the Constellation semifinals. Uh, and then you got to win one of two to go to States. And uh, that's exactly what Richards does. Like that's one of the, that's the one of the, one of the, those first round matchups you got to look for uh, is that Weldon Richards, because it really, really gives you that, that path that sometimes like the gates open up and like the stars align. And it's like, Oh man, this is not the, not the road that others are going to have to take or not as difficult a uh, road as others are going to have to take to get there. So like, I, I like Richards. I think he wins. Uh, he, he beats Bradley. He beats Nathaniel Ches from uh, Wissahickon. Uh, and then loses to Ramasco and then beats Justin Bainbridge from uh, Plymouth White Marsh in that 5 6 match. Uh, and then you see, I, I do have Ramasco and Hogan, and Hogan taking third. Uh, you know, I believe uh, Hogan's one of the top three wrestlers in this weight class. Um, and, you know, Glenn has him at first, I have him at third. Uh, he very easily could beat, uh, beat Pasco and make the final and, not, and, and lose to McClellan. Like, I think if we're talking, like, we have three. Uh, really good kids in this weight class. And I think those are the three that, um, uh, you know, not that we need to focus on, but I think there are our three best. And then it's, you know, everyone else fighting for those last two spots. 
Yeah, I like Hogan to take third there. If he doesn't make the finals, it's kind of, you know, the two seniors going to graduate and it'll be his weight next year. I think Keller has a good shot to make that consolation final. I have him taken fourth, and then I have Romasco, you know, finished in fifth over Richards. Uh, just tough, tough weight for a freshman, but, I mean, it would not surprise anyone if a spring forward kid snuck into the last spot to go to state. So that seems like it happens every year. One or two one or two Rams kind of sneak in there, and they're like, oh, well, there we go. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm on Nate's side here uh, with my bracket the way it panned out. I have Keller and Richards getting out, um, so it's you know again I, I just feel like this is a weight class where uh, we're someone's someone's gonna change the entire bracket. Uh, not not one guy. I think two guys here uh, are gonna change the bracket. One's gonna happen up top. One's gonna happen down below. Um, so I, I guess we just have a little bit of difference. I have Richards getting out. I have Keller getting out. I have Pasco getting out and Hogan and McClellan. So I don't know if that works for you, Joe. I think you're you're one short. And, Nate, are you with me on that? Yeah, I had McClellan, Pasco, Hogan, Keller, and Ramasco. Yeah, I, I, don't, I think you guys are missing the boat there. Hmm. But we'll see what happens. All right. We'll drop into... 189, three to go. So here we are. Uh, three to go. Man, did, did you tell everyone that it's 2 a.m. yet or no? <laughs> no, it's not. Not yet, at least. So uh, this this weight class uh, is intriguing. And if you're looking at the bracket right now, I can already hear people complaining uh, about my picks. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm waiting. I know probably uh, both Nate and Glenn will disagree with me. But it's okay. Um, you know, maybe my uh, my red sunglasses were on a little bit too much for this one, but I'm gonna make a take a take a shot at justifying this one. Um, you know, you have Sam Milligan's your one seed. Uh, you know, uh, he is uh, enjoying a, a tremendous senior year. He's 37 six. Uh, you know, Walker Murray from Pensbury's tough. Uh, you know, you got Carter Euchre, a talented sophomore from that PV program, one of the Euchre brothers. Uh, Freshman Dean Bechtel, Mason Hale dropping down to two to 189. Finally, uh, he's always been a light 215. Now he he tries had it at, at um excuse me 189. He was second place last week. Uh, Jake Allred, who has been one of the top three ranked guys all year in District One, taking a loss in the final in the semifinals last week uh, and finishing third. Uh, Hutton Smith's been like just lurking all year out of Lower Mary, not getting a lot of like uh, um, uh, talk about him. And then Jeremy McKinney, who just, you know, kind of quietly went 33 and four this year. So if we look at like my bracket, I got Milligan, Murray, Euchre, Bechtold, Hale, Allred, Smith, and McKinney in the quarters. And this is where, you know, might get a little, uh, you know, some people might see it differently, but Milligan, Bechtold surviving, Allred, and McKinney. And then a rematch of District One North with Dean Bechtold becoming a freshman regional champ. Gentlemen. Do do your worst to me. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, Nate, you go first and just like kind of give us some <laughs> rationale. And then, no, I mean, I, I think obviously you got the red sunglasses on, but I don't think it's completely out of out of the realm of possibility. Bechtel has obviously showed a lot this season. You know, he gets on top, he can cradle anybody. So, uh, you know, it was a close match against Milligan earlier in the season. I think Milligan beat him, but obviously, Five, two. yeah, Bechtel's come a long way. He's at a you know. Just settling down at 189 for the last month or so. So um, I think he, I, I, I think I'm going to go with Milligan, but I don't think that you're crazy for picking Bechtold. It's certainly, uh, certainly one to, to ponder about and keep an eye on. Um, both Bechtolds in the, in the finals and winning titles would be pretty special for, for that family for sure. Um, but I think I agree with everything else. I think I, I actually, I actually do like McKinney coming from the bottom though. Um, he's just, uh, he's had an interesting career, you know, he made regionals as a, as a freshman, didn't get selected for the, the postseason as a sophomore, broke his leg last year. So he's kind of the forgotten man, uh, but he's been wrestling on fire. He's got a lot of swagger. He kind of wrestles with a ton of energy. Um, that'd be interesting. I think if, even if he, if he gets to the finals, I think he gives a good match and he's certainly, you know, in it to win it. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure that he does or not, but I think 189 is 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 open. I don't think there's a, a a bona fide guaranteed champ here. Milligan could win. Bechtel could win. McKinney could win. All Reds obviously had a good career. So 
um, he, he's right in the mix. And obviously, Hale, you never know. I mean, he's had a rough, rough senior year, but he's, you know, he's got the pedigree and he's he's won some big matches too. Uh, that will be a big quarterfinal against All Red uh, to help him get out. Um, I know he's disappointed after the, after the the finals last week against McKinney, but um, I, I I do wonder. You know, I want to kind of keep an eye on Ryan Rowe. I don't know that he is an upset threat in this bracket, but I think in the consolation bracket, Ryan Rowe is one of those guys to keep an eye on. He's had a tough tough freshman year. He's 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 strong, and uh, you know they got a lot of those guys in the practice room all all going together. So watch out for the Rams down down low. Yeah, I mean, I I had a hard time with this bracket. I'll be honest with you. Um, and Ryan Rowe is the the kind of wild card for me. He may be a dark horse here to get the states. Um, but he, he could end up being a bracket buster uh, somewhere along the line and change the, the entire outcome uh, of the top five here that will advance to Hershey. Uh, I do have Milligan winning, Joe, uh, in that semifinal match with Bechtold. Um, you know, I, I just I feel like it's kind of a, you know, man strength thing. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to meet the Bechtolds in, in, in a back alley anytime soon, even with my my best uh, backup guy. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a big one. That's going to be a great semifinal. I do have Milligan win. I have Milligan beating Aldrin in the final. Um, I have McKinney as well getting into the semi. So I, I think it makes sense to drop down a little bit and, and kind of talk a little bit how this might pan out because we might have, uh, you know, different guys getting out down here. All right, Glenn, why don't you just keep going? All uh, right, yeah, so I have Hale uh, kind of plowing through, taking out Row in my bracket, um, and that's that's the difference. And, and like Nate said, if, if that changes, um, that changes a little bit of things. But I, I'm not going to take Hale out. And I got Euchre getting through here, um, and, and I think Euchre gets an upset too. So it, it's one of those things where – I just feel the bracket's crazy. I got Bechtel getting the states, um, but I got him in the fifth place spot. Nate, what do you have? Yeah, hey, I got Bechtel taking third over All Red in another rematch from last week, and then I got Hale over Murray. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, Murray and uh, Euchre, you know, if they if they make it there in that blood round. The two sophomores at a at a, at a big weight, you know, a lot of young talent at this weight. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I just I'm gonna. Put my put my money on Hale that he kind of finds something something in his loins to get him through this week because it's been a a rougher season than I think he expected. So I think he pulls one out and gets back to Hershey and goes out in style at least. Yeah, I agree. I have him in the third spot, but I have him against Euchre just because of my bracket the way it rolls out. So that's a big difference. But just one one match changes everything. But I got Hale in the third spot. Uh, yeah, you know, pull for a kid like Hale. Just uh, you know. I said he's not just paid his dues; everyone pays their dues to some extent. However, he just had just it seems like just never, always never caught a break anywhere. And uh, you know, I'd like to I'd like to see him finish uh, his career uh, for the Whippets out in Mount Hershey. So, all right. With that said, we're gonna let's put uh, eighty nine to bed. Let's roll right in the two fifteen. All right, so. We have on the screen here. Give me one second. Let me get it. there. We go now. We got everything on the screen. Um, you know, we have number one seed uh, Dylan Bechtold, O.J. Roberts. He's thirty-nine two in the year. Um, you have uh, other guys to watch. Riley Cullen, uh, someone to watch out for. Uh, you know, got to see him really for the first time at District Duels. Really impressed uh, with what he's able to do. And then now that he's settling at two fifteen. I know him in Washington flip flop back and forth depending on the matchups. Two fifteen is a better weight class for Riley Cullen. Uh, you know, you got Grant Euchre, the senior from PV, uh, Dom Domeno from Pottsgrove. Uh, you know, we go Chessmont. John Pardo has been around, uh, and, you know, he's, uh, he's a junior, but he's, uh, he's I think his third time at regionals. Uh, Chase Thompson, you know, coming down from heavyweight and staying at 215. Um, you know, we'll see how it works out for him. Personally, I think he's a guy that just wrestles the big guys really well because uh, he's able to use his athleticism and his speed. Um, but, you know, I'm sure him and his, his coaching staff made this decision they felt best for him. Uh, Anthony Crawford, again, the, the champ from the South. Um, and then Calvin Lockman, who, you know, basically started the season out as the number one guy in the, in the state at 215. Things have since changed uh, since then. But uh, nevertheless, I think he's number three or maybe number four in the latest uh, PA Power Rankings. With that said, I think Dylan Bechtold wins this. Um, 
you know, that match with Lockman and rematch from, from district duels where it was a five, one win by Bechtel. I think you see more of the same. Uh, I'll say this and I'm going to turn over to you guys. This is where the Bechtolds will etch their names into district one lore uh, as brothers who won regional titles the same year. Uh, last group to do is the CAC is from Sun Valley in 2020. Uh, before that, the Rappos in 2011, the Kemmers in 2007, the Rappos in 05, and the ga- the Guides in 2004. Um, you know, and just a little bit of research. I try to do and put my best Nate Heckenberger, uh, you know, um, together right there. We bring out some stats with the help of Mike. Uh, I got to shout out Mike Leister on, on on the assist with that one. But um, you know, what I do you have, this- Mike? You have Mike in your? Do you have an earphone? Like. Uh, uh, yeah, he, I, I, I do. I have him, you know, I have him on a, uh, my a third screen off, uh, off here when we're communicating. Yeah, those so, are, those um, are Nate Hackenberg's, uh, yeah, what a, it would have been his Daft right brothers too, crazy, if it weren't man. for, uh, you know what? I remember the guys, man. Ooh, you know that, listen, that's, that's good stuff, Joe. Um, you know what? I, I'm, I can't say it, it won't happen. <clears throat> um, I have the bracket exactly like you do. <laughs> up top here in the from the semis on um i think euchre euchre has, has uh, i believe two losses to, to dom domino this year i think euchre figures them out um you know i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna say that the pv coaching staff finds a way to get him uh you know to that point gets and gets him get past him yeah, yeah. Um, i have actually i just double checked um i have the quarters the same way so you know i'm ready to drop down um i have beck told winning this over lockman um, and like you said, Lockman at the beginning of the year. And listen, Lockman's dangerous. You know, listen, if he's, he's he is little, he is as good as they come. Yeah, if they get a little tangle, you know, on their feet, you know that that could be you know a game changer. But um, I, I have the bracket exactly the same as Joe Youngblood. So yeah, so I what's our too. guy Mo Mo Youngblood and <laughs> well, how, how do you say my first name? Ken Geyser. Yeah, there it is. That that guy. You better have this bracket the same way. We're coming looking for him. I have uh, I have the same same thing as well. I do think that Pardo getting overlooked a little bit. Uh, I know Lockman's ranked, I think, third in the state. And Pardo's ranked number seven, so it'll be one of the better semifinals in the in the tournament. Uh, I know they wrestled earlier at Bethlehem. It was a close match into overtime. Lockman got the uh, got the takedown. Lockman was definitely the more aggressive wrestler that match. He got in a ton of shots, and Pardo was able to fight off a bunch. So if you just go by shots taken, Lockman has the advantage. Obviously, he got the win there. But I think that is going to be a tough one. I think, uh, you know, Pardo certainly has the ability to beat Lockman. Um, is Lockman a football player, Glenn? I don't think he plays football, right? I don't, uh, I don't think he does. I, don't think he's I mean, with that guy walking around in his polo shirt, he needs to put on some shoulder pads next year for the Panthers. But uh, I, think yeah. I think I think I believe he's used to and he stopped. Yeah, uh, well, I, yeah. Think, he, I think that maybe is the difference here. Um, or excuse me, he definitely played football early on. I don't know, um, you know how how he uh, changed. Uh, Kurt Handel yeah. probably said, "Hey, man, wrestling's your sport." Now, <laughs> I mean, I'm hey, it's kidding. paying off. Listen, I'm not knocking you know the kid at all. I think that yeah, might no, be the difference there in the semifinals. Lockman, you know, year-round wrestler. Pardo is a pretty good football player for Kenneth, but I think it comes down to, you know, who's stellar training, who's not. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be fair to Pardo. Uh, he, he's uh, he's coached. Outside of Kenneth, by one of you know all-time greats in District One, uh, and Michael Absolutely. Boykin. So yep. uh, Michael Boykin knows a little thing about winning regional titles and uh, state titles for that matter. So yep. uh, let's be fair. Like you know, I'm, we're they're not in the same level per se, but you know, Michael Boykin's not yes. nothing uh, to uh, yeah. to uh, overlook either. Yeah, shout out Michael. Two Mike. takedowns, I think. You know, who, who gets yeah. his first two takedowns as the advantage, but. It yeah, should be a good one. About, All right, let's check out the about, Russellbacks here. Hang on. Can, can I talk about Michael Boykin real quick? He's going into the uh, <laughs> Hall of Fame, and uh, he's not going to be able to be there because he'll be coaching for the Kraken out there at PJWs. Um, and, again, I just want to talk about Pardo as well. You know, and, and football coaches and upper weight wrestlers. I mean, you know, there needs to be some, you know, uh, communication with football coaches and wrestling coaches when you have these situations. Um, and again, this is one match where, you know, for me, like you said, Nate, I did get to see part of the Cole cracker. Um, he's a beast. Um, he can go with anybody. So that Lockman Pardo match, um, could go either way. Um, but you know, just back to Boykin, uh, and football and all those things. I, I really think that 
uh, throughout the sport of wrestling and football coaches can finally get on board and understand that, uh, you know, kids can be better at one sport, but still play football um, and football not being their primary sport. You know, that that to me is really important uh, for the sport of wrestling. And I can't say that anymore. I lived it as a coach um, over the years, and I know you guys do at O and J. I know they do down there uh, at these these. And, and Quakertown's been a powerful football team over the years. So yeah, get their Bechtel's some shoulder pads too. What are we doing over there? <laughs> All right, you can move on. Drop All on. right, let's move down. <clears throat> so. Uh, you know, as, as it goes, uh, you know what, uh, Nate, how do you see the bottom half of this bracket going? I know we're pretty similar up top. Yeah, yeah, I have Pardo over Euchre as well. And then Domeno, I think, gets out. Uh, you know, either Domeno, you know, Domeno or Euchre, whoever wins that one takes fourth. And then the other one takes fifth, I think. I think it's, uh, you know, Croft, or Thompson's right there in the mix. But uh, I, I just like some of the other guys. You know, I think – if, as long as Euchre can kind of stay healthy and make it through this tournament, I think he's got the skill set to get there. That, I know he's that, back that's up. huge. You know, that, yeah. that, that, that's, you know, I don't want to defer to that, but like, that's, that's a big thing. Um, and I'll say this about Thompson while his best attributes are his athleticism and strength and explosiveness. Uh, this, this weight class, unfortunately, 215, uh, we're just, we're, we're blessed with a lot of guys who can just wrestle. Uh, yeah. I think Crawford, if, if they, if they match up, there in that part of the bracket, I think Crawford will wrestle Thompson, um, you know, uh, in, in that situation. Um, cause he, I think he's a better wrestler, um, not necessarily a better athlete, just a better wrestler. Uh, and I mentioned Riley Cole at the beginning, I think Collins again, that situation with the, with Dom Domeno. And I think Dom Domeno is a better wrestler than Riley Cullen is at this yeah. at this point in time. Cullen, Cullen is a big boy. I mean, I saw him up in Hershey. Yeah. He is, and, he, and again, you talk about just like, uh, I'm sure he plays football for that Penridge Rams program. Yeah. And like he, like, you know, again, he can just go and he's got a, he's got a motor and he, and he's athletic. Um, but like, you know, where you got a guy that can kind of match it for strength, like the Meno and, and be a little bit better wrestler. I think that might be the difference. Yeah, I'd like to see these guys in a squat contest. I mean, these guys have legs that are unbelievable. <laughs> They're very powerful, and they all wrestle like, uh, you know, uh, you know, like lightweights. They they shoot, they they do high crotches, they duck under, they you know they they have an arsenal that's not common uh, for this type of weight class at two fifteen uh, because they are the type of athletes they are. Um, I have a little bit different. Um, you know, but it, it's not that much different. I have Crawford and Euchard. I have Crawford getting by Euchard, though. Um, and I have Euchard beating Cullen uh, down in that fifth-place match. I just have Cullen getting by Domino based, again, on, on the scheduling piece and the, and, the, and the wars and grinds that Penn Ridge has been in throughout, uh, you know, the season, especially at the state duels. Uh, and, and I have Pardo taking out Crawford uh, for that third spot. So just a little bit different. Uh, with Cullen wrestling for that fifth spot, but um, I, and I have Euchre uh, getting out, so I think we have the top top five here, guys. Um, this is a great weight class. This is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one. I mean, you know, people and don't be leaving the gym, you know, early on this on this final. This is our best time for three state medals here. I mean, if there's gonna be one, it's oh yeah, one. this could be it. Yeah. And and that's where like you know it. What makes it so exciting is that we got guys that that can wrestle. We're not gonna have guys that are gonna push each other around for for five no. minutes. They're guys that like they can, you know. Glenn, you yeah. said it. Uh, Nate, you said it. Like these are guys that that kind of grew to this size. They were they were lighter weight at one point in time. They had to learn how to wrestle, and it's and now they're they're uh, you know they're polished wrestlers before anything else. And it, it really makes for exciting exciting two fifteen matches. So yeah, there's gonna be a ton of shots in that part of Lockman match. So there's not gonna be a lot of dancing. Right. All right, and now time for the last weight class of the tournament. We got heavyweight, and here is, uh, you know, I think Fairbaugh has been the guy all year. And I, uh, you know, sorry if I just cut in and went first. Fairbaugh has been the guy all year. I think this is his weight class to lose. Uh, but I think you know when we talk about uh, levels. I think Fairbaugh's in a, in, a, in a level all by himself, but literally nipping at his heels is, is Joe Collins. Uh, a contrast of heavyweights, where Fairbaugh's more athletic, uh, Collins more of just the you know the, the immovable object 
where he's going to control ties uh, and be very opportunistic. So uh, it's definitely contrast of styles that I'm excited to see. Uh, but like, if we look back a little bit uh, and, you know, see how we get to that point. Um, I, I look at the Cooper Gardner, Christian Gregory matchup. It's a rematch of district one North final. The winner of that match, I believe makes the semifinals. Um, however, uh, after that, that point, whoever makes that semifinal, it's a tough road to go because of how things will go earlier in that, in that bracket. You look at the bottom half, the bottom half has a little bit more talent in it, uh, with Schindel, Goddard, uh, Mac and, and Joe Collins, because the loser of that semifinal is going to be in the same half with, with Troy Mack. And, you know, he, although hasn't wrestled the whole season, uh, you know, he's not a guy you want to, you want to see in, in a, in a wrestle back match. Yeah, I'll jump in a little bit here because um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Collins. Nate and I talk a lot uh, off camera about Collins' improvement um, as a wrestler. Um, I, I kind of have everything the same way, actually exactly the same way down through the quarters. But I have Schindel getting by Collins here um, uh, into the finals. And, and, and I don't know why. I just This is one of the Kenneth guys that I got to see um, you know, during the season, which I normally don't. And he, he's got an extra motor um, and seems to have a different mat awareness than some of these bigger heavyweights. Um, Collins will keep it close um, in, in matches, uh, but I've seen him lose some of those matches last year. So I don't know if that, that's changed for him, um, but I just see Schindel kind of keeping it close uh, and getting it done in the end. So that, that's a big change in my bracket. But again, I think we have um, – probably the same five getting out yeah i agree i have the same quarters as you guys and i have Schindel winning the coin toss and taking the old three two ultimate tiebreaker against collins to, to make the finals there but uh i think that's going to be you know that's it'll be interesting to see collins progression because he's got to get through mac which will have the size advantage mac is you know smaller but more nimble i'm not sure the, if he can get a couple if he can get a takedown against collins that would be obviously huge he's not going to ride you out like some of the bigger guys but he's better on his feet um but Schindel, i'm just going to go with you know to to pull one out and get to the finals agreed all right so let's go to these wrestlebacks and um you know i, I you look at uh, you know, the, the wrestlebacks and, you know, someone that, you know, we didn't mention up top that I think is worth mentioning the bottom, uh, is Bledsoe from Garnet Valley, uh, quietly put together a really good season. I think he makes the quarterfinals, loses to Farabaugh and he drops down and, you know, if things go the way I think he, he'll see Washington from Penridge, uh, again, Washington, not a full size heavyweight. Uh, Bledsoe being that, you know, taking advantage of that size. Bledsoe uh, then loses the Schindel, and then uh, Bledsoe beating Gardner in the uh, in the five six match. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Right, so Bledsoe getting Abariah in the first round again. They wrestled two, I think, over both of our overtime matches last week. Uh, they only, you know, they faced each other three times. Abariah beat him the first time. Bledsoe beat him twice last week in overtime. So that could go either way. But I, I have actually uh, Washington, you know, winning that blood round down there and, and wrestling for fifth. I have Washington beating Gardner, and I have uh, Collins beating Mack in the third, fourth. All right, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little bit different. Um, I have, we know that, Glenn, we know. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> I mean, that's clearly the case. Uh, but I have, since I have Collins down here too, um, you know, I have Collins beating Mack for third place. Um, so that's a little bit different. But uh, in terms of the Gardner Bledsoe, I do have Bledsoe getting in here to the fifth place match uh, against Gardner. I have Gardner winning it. So that's kind of a, a coin toss for me. Uh, and, and Washington's dangerous, uh, Nate. You know, I, I kind of kind of forgot about Washington a little bit, um, but I, I don't think he gets there. Um, but we'll see. I mean, again, so there, there's a couple little toss up matches down here in these wrestle backs that could change the, uh, the bracket entirely. Um, but I do have Collins getting out, uh, taking Mac, uh, out for that third place medal. And I have Gardner sneaking by Bledsoe, but, uh, I, I think we're pretty close here. Again, the, the heavyweights, there, someone always falls the wrong way and, and we, we change a bracket, you know, someone gets a throw, 
um, you know, and, and it changes the whole bracket. So I, I do anticipate one of those. Um, I don't know where it's going to happen, but it's probably, probably going to happen down here in the Conti's. Yeah. All right. So before we close this whole thing out, Nate, regional champions. Oh, for team? Yes. I mean, just going back to 285 real quick, I think whoever wins this is probably an underdog oh. against Bo Jackson next week. But uh, – <laughs> But uh, let's see, team champs. I think uh, I don't know. Shout Clark, out Benny. Got a lot of what's that? Yeah, exactly. I have not. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't figured that out. The team team race, but I think Quakertown and Penridge will be right there in the mix. I think uh, you know they got a lot of guys in the finals from those two schools. So, Glenn, who do you got? Uh, I've already said Penridge is uh, clearly uh, the team to beat here. They they have the depth. They have a lot of wrestlers uh, in the tournament. Um, I think they're going to have. Uh, you know, a solid tournament. I think this is, you know, a team that just reminds me of an upper perk team back in the day that is just, you know, designed and geared for the postseason. Um, I think this is a, a regional title for Penridge for them to lose. Yeah, so uh, Nate had to leave us. Uh, so yesterday, uh, when we first started this, I went and counted out, like, who I, how many state qualifiers each team would have. I think, uh, you know, Penridge is a safe bet. I think they're going to get six out. Uh, I feel like, you know, um, Rock South might have in, upwards of five. Um, uh, o and J four PV might have PV might get five out uh, as well, which they've never had more than two, I believe. Yeah, Quaker Town's year. got four. Oh, Quaker, Ta Quaker Town's going to have four, maybe, maybe upwards of six, depending how things work out. So I, I think you're going to look at like, uh, you know, yeah, some capacity. It could be a one, two, three with suburban one schools uh, before you see a school from outside suburban one getting getting there. Uh, yeah. You know, I think yeah, I said I you know, pack, I mean, pack league, schools are going to uh, teams going one, two, three. Well, is that? Yeah. Hey, listen. You know the the team score. The, this may be a, a southeast regional uh, team battle that we have not ever seen. Um, we we've seen two teams go at it. Um, but I, I don't think we've seen three or four teams um, be able to post uh, points. Um, but it, this is going to be interesting. But I think the SOL, uh, Swerve One League, will be in the top three. I think they'll go one, two, three. Not sure of the order, uh, but I have Penridge kind of winning it all. All right, Glenn. Well, I think that's, uh, I that's, think that's good for now. That is a wrap. I, we're, we are good to go. Um, you know, reading that, do you want to throw out your your uh your OW? Oh man, I have to go back real quick. I I mean I I think if uh, my my upset meter works, it's gonna be well. You know what? Sometimes you know the committee sometimes goes with the best wrestler in the building, regardless of what happens in the so. Finals. While you're looking, while you're looking for your upset meter and that, here's how I'm going to go. I'm going to give two names. All right. I'm going to give two names. Uh, I'm going to go to the safe bet and then one based upon my picks. All right. Um, and I'll start with one based upon my picks. If Dil if Dean Bechtold wins 189 pounds, I believe he'll be the OW. If that does not happen, it'll be Colin Guy because Colin Guy will dispel every opponent he wrestles by major decision or more. I would agree with that, um, but my upset guy would be Kakos. If Kakos wins a weight class, he's the OW. Uh, that would be my, you know, you know, what do, what do you call that when you're going to college? What's that school? Your reach school? That would yeah. be my reach. Pick. That's your reach. Um, well, then, then, then by by far, by uh, by all means, Dean Bechtold's my reach as well. Yeah. So, Glenn, and hey, go, uh, and go I ahead. agree with you. Anybody that's undefeated and wins a regional title. Um, in the fact Your name's got to be in the mix. Yeah. I so, uh, big thanks to Nate Heckenberger uh, for coming on. Like I said he had to leave. Uh, we really, you know, went, um, you know, long, probably longer than we, we probably anticipated. Uh, big yeah, shout out to Mike Leister. To the buzzer. Yeah, he was. Uh, big shout out to Mike Leister for editing these videos and doing all that he does at uh, PAWrestling.com. Um, yeah, don't forget about our sponsors, Joe. No, never. Uh, we got uh, Gear to Compete and ASICs are our sponsors i uh, can't thank them enough for all that they've done for us and will continue to do for us looking forward to a long and prosperous relationship with the, both of those companies and glenn any uh any last uh parting words of no, wisdom? It's, it's this is going to be one of the best southeast 
excuse me, Southeast regions we have uh, seen in a long time. We, yep, we have 100%. It's go today. time this weekend. Yeah, we have some great talent in District 1 this year, and we're going to expect that medal count to go way up, uh, maybe even double the last two years, I, and I'm not kidding. All right. Well, with that said, uh, you know, can't wait to see guys strap it up and get after this weekend. Thanks, as always, and see you. See you yeah, Saturday. Good luck, everyone.